Give me five seconds. No Sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't know we were I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you twenty. <laughs> okay. I think we're online, so if anyone can hear us, please confirm. Uh, if you can hear us, if not, then we don't. We're, uh, and I think I can promise that we'll have no echo this time. I mean, maybe just for a few seconds, but I'm becoming an e expert in this. So if you guys got uh, that link uh, for the IFCC Academy website, where we okay. have these streams uh, shown, uh, uh, three of them actually, actually it's the same stream, but uh, through three different channels. If you got it, please, uh, try commenting in all three uh, chat boxes just so we can check you know if things work properly I mean these interviews are also like a really good opportunity for us to you know prepare ourselves for the event you know which is like a already looks like a beast that we cannot win against but we will try you know so yeah uh, it's uh, still two minutes until the until the start uh, uh, just to remind you the IFCC online starts on 25th of May for now it's the biggest online conference festival or whatever of its kind I know that other organizers are listening you know like THU guys industry workshop guys and that they'll do something even bigger probably but <laughs> until then we're the we're the we're the we're the largest conference uh at the moment like few few days back we had like the fantastic performance from the we are playgrounds guys from netherlands this was like the amazing flawless uh, uh digital art event i hope you have been watching uh, our colleagues did an amazing job amazing uh uh, intros, music, everything. It, it was just perfect. So I really enjoyed it, uh, learned some new things uh, and I hope uh, it will help us for our own event. Uh, hey, today, uh, hey, hey, hi. Sorry, I'm, I'm back. Just oh, wanted to oh. say, let you know. Okay, so we have uh, Anis Naim with us. Uh, I mean, we can we can start because like it's 8 o'clock, so here it's 8, it's 11 there. 11 mm -hmm. a.m. right uh here's 8 p.m we can start uh, anis name is with us uh, one of the 60 plus uh speakers instructors demo artists uh, uh, of the ifcc 2020 and uh, uh i really fell in love with his work uh, this year we should have done the online uh online uh, interview i think it was already half uh, half a year ago or so yeah, yeah. but then it kind of you know uh it gone wrong and we never did it and uh, but yeah i just got busy but yeah uh, same same thing here so uh i'll try to uh, control myself and not interrupt too much uh i also have a lot of questions uh you know you can just you know talk about anything you want uh, but for start you know just introduce yourself and sure. tell us something about your background and all that yeah uh, my name is Anis Naeem I live in Los Angeles I moved out here when I was 18 years old in 2006 um, so yeah I, I knew I wanted to be a concept artist long ago um, and it's been a journey. I, uh, I mean, I love what I do, and it's a passion of mine, and it's great. I'm blessed to be able to do it every day. Um, yeah, and as for artistic journey, I mean, it's, you know, I, I came here because I knew about Art Center, uh, or I found out about Art Center when I was about 15. And I uh, just found a random book by Sid Mead and I saw that he went to Art Center. And I was like, oh, okay, well, he went, so I want to go there. And then I found Scott Robertson's DVDs and, um, 
you know, just a bunch of people. There was Nick Pugh's DVD that was out, uh, Ryan Church, and uh, I think I, the first one I ever bought was Ryan Church's Nomen DVD, mm-hmm. and I, that was the only one I could afford at the time. It was they were like eighty dollars a pop, and I was in high school, so I just had to use my own money to get it, of course. Um, and so I just kind of like watched that video or that DVD of his. When I, I think when I was like 14, 15, I don't even remember, um, on, uh, and the, the Wacom tablets were called like the Graphire or something back then. Oh, they have a, uh, had a different name then. Yeah, the Wacom Graphire. It was like a different, you know, the super cheap tablet that I bought and just kept like recreating that DVD over and over until, you know, I, I could afford more when I moved out and came to... Uh, LA and uh, yeah um, and then when I got here it was you know quite a journey I, I don't come from money uh, actually the opposite is, I wouldn't say extremely poor upbringing but <laughs> we, we just didn't have any money so when I came here it was like a do or die sort of uh, attitude where I knew I couldn't fail because there was no backup plan. Um, there, there wasn't. You know, my parents were depending on me for money, not, <laughs> uh, not the other way around. But uh, so I, uh, I knew I had to succeed no matter what. And uh, yeah, it just it, it kind of helped. You know, well, not kind of. It did help. I, I, it, the journey was longer because I had to do a lot of you know just side hustle work at like pizza places and stuff and go to school but um it was good and uh i had fun and then i went to art center in 2008 i got a basically a full scholarship there um into the transportation design program uh because uh at the time entertainment design didn't exist Mm -hmm. and uh what year was that 2008 so two years after Mm -hmm. i got to la uh i I, I applied in 2006 and they accepted me in the illustration program but then uh, I just uh, I, I liked the design side of it more so I decided to wait and also I didn't get any scholarship money in 2006 because my work was you know not so great so I spent two years working on my portfolio there's a community college here in Pasadena called Pasadena City College so a lot of the teachers some of the teachers that teach uh, at PCC also teach at Art Center, so you kind of get like a crash course, and then uh, you know I had the opportunity to develop some um, you know some of my portfolio pieces, and then I met Scott Robertson, and uh, when I went into transportation design in my first year, and I spoke to him and I said, hey, I, I didn't know entertainment was even a thing, can I switch over? And then he said, yeah, uh, just take, you know, uh, the year off and then come back to catch up with the previous class. So I did. And, uh, yeah, never looked back. Um, I'm super grateful to Scott. We published a few books together uh, through his design studio press company at the time. Um, that was a lot of fun. I, I owe him a great deal for, you know, trusting myself. And uh, the, the other... Uh, artist who's really great is Danny Gardner Mm -hmm. Uh, so he and I kind of worked with Scott for about a whole summer and you know very fond memories of that time we had so much fun Um, I remember just laughing every single day Um, and that was uh, working with Scott was like the first I was still like in my first year or like first one and a half year of college or art art center so I, I you know, up until now, I was like, oh, I know how to work hard, but I didn't know how to work hard because, <laughs> uh, you know, he'd be, we'd be goofing off thinking, you know, you know how students are, like, yeah. y- you think you think you're working hard, but like you're, you know, a true professional shows up to work at like 8, 9 a.m. and then just works, like there's then no distractions just silence or just low you know music and then you go to you go to lunch and you come back and then you keep working until like 6 7 8 p.m. and then you go home and 
that that was like a big one for for both of us because like you know the no breaks uh which was it's, it was good to see it in practice and just having the silence in the studio was a was a big deal uh and and working so i feel like I just that learning that alone was a big a big advantage for me uh and I think it was because it was just Scott in the studio and just the three of us. So you could, if you goofed off, it was just, you know, there's no one else making noise. But uh, if I had been at a larger company, I think it would have been easier to you know, have the water cooler talk. But um, yeah, I just, I, then I went back to Art Center and did a bunch of stuff. I tried to get into the film directing program, but my scholarship wasn't going to get transferred as well as... Uh, they uh, they said I'd have to start over because I needed to you know take fundamental classes or whatnot, and I didn't want to get into a bunch of student debt, so I decided to just you know leave Art Center at that point because I uh, just felt like I gotten enough, and also I had gotten a bunch of job offers on various movies and stuff, so I figured why not just take them and pursue it, and that's kind of been my journey, and since then I've. I left Art Center in like 2010, I think, and then since then I've been working for the last 10 years on all these movies. Um, I kind of disappeared off the internet for years and years there, uh, and uh, was just really busy working. Yeah, I myself discovered you only this year, I think, or, or the last year. I, I think I got in contact as soon as I saw as soon as I saw your uh, this color exploding uh, works uh, experiments or whatever yeah. you want to call them uh, uh, I was like oh uh, first uh, it was so relatable to what some of my concepts I had in my head and I was like wow you know this guy has some similar <laughs> ideas you know like I got to get in co contact with him uh, and I really like you know how those sketches were like really uh, because you're mixing uh, your uh, works from your your real life sketchbook and then uh, some of them you digitalize or your color yeah. and and it's so everything's so loosened you know you, you you don't render it to the max and um, so I, I guess these are more of your personal uh, studies yeah. than than the client work am I right yeah yeah, I, I there's like three different types of work that I do, maybe four different types. Like, even in you know, one there's the, of course professional client work. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you do it, you just do it. That's that's all. That's the only thing that matters. The results, and then you make them look as good and as great as you possibly can. That's the only goal, right? But then you get to personal work, and with this Plumehead series, I mean. I I just felt like I didn't want to do more of those speed paintings that you know you just do in work like I just didn't want to repeat the same uh, tricks if that makes any sense um, at, at work and then I wanted to do something that would make me happy and this plumehead stuff did and it was just something different um, and uh, yeah I just excuses to sketch on paper scan it in and then I set certain parameters for myself like uh, not trying to it was basically like everything not concept arty that's what I was trying to do or I try to do where all my usual habits of like trying to use you know these super painterly brushes and worry about brush strokes so I was like cool I'm actually gonna be messy I'm gonna be like super loose and sketchy and 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 uh, just not care about like line quality and there's definitely a certain freedom with it and the work it's definitely different and it, it definitely goes slower of course you know because you're hand painting everything mm -hmm. but it's fun uh, that's why I'm doing it so yeah uh, so, the start of your story, uh, your LA story, your LA part of the life, uh, reminded me of uh, the stories of uh, at least uh, two or three other guys uh, 
I'll just remember the recent one, which I did hear uh, before, uh, because uh, the person behind it was uh, our guest uh, for a few times. Uh, but th just a week ago, I was listening to 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 his uh, podcast. Uh, I don't know if you know personally Justin Gobi Fields, uh, but. Uh, he also has this <laughs> came to LA, you know, to <laughs> succeed uh, or die <laughs> yeah. uh, kind of story. And also, like, it's the same thing. He got uh, similar books, like, from, from the same author, uh, and, and, and which was, like, a, a big motivation uh, a, and so on. So uh, I'm just thinking this really sounds uh, like a, a pattern because uh, it reminds mm. me of the... Uh, uh, Hollywood actors who come there to succeed <laughs> or not. So I'm just imagining like how many artists then come to LA and try, uh, and how many of them don't succeed. Yeah. In the end. Yeah, I mean LA is is a weird, weird, weird place. I think you can like the first thing that I felt when I got to LA was, I mean I'd never been. I'd never traveled before when I was a kid because we didn't have any money. So the only place I'd been was New Jersey where I grew up. Um, and so I wasn't used to traveling and all of a sudden now I'm here all alone. I'd never even taken a public bus before because <laughs> like I only I walked to school and walked back from school all my life. That was it. Um, and Regular so was, everyday normal guy. Yeah, like nothing ever different. So all of a sudden, I'm like moving out to LA. I don't know, you know, I only have like one month of savings and all this other stuff. Um, and I got to find a job within the month to pay for the following month of rent. The funniest part is the uh, I looked up an apartment <laughs> from Craigslist uh, before ever seeing it. So. I had to convince the landlord to just rent it to me, even though she had no proof that I would actually show up or, you know, any of that. And I was like, I promise. So I sent her like a hundred dollar deposit because the rent was only five hundred dollars a month. Um, and then she said, OK, we'll keep it. And I was like, wow, this room is going to be so great. And I show up and it was <laughs> it only had three walls and it was a balcony and she had completely lied. So. The fourth wall was just a curtain that I uh, I just had to be careful not to step over the edge, uh, which I was really shocked because she didn't mention any of that. It just she in the picture she just made it look like you know completely yeah. Anyway, have you discussed but, this situation? I, I was you know the thing that's the thing I was out on my own I I didn't know how to be assertive at the time yeah and they take so advantage was, of, of yeah and i was like i it's a room and i'm fine so yeah, whatever you're alive <laughs> yeah and then um i was just like cool i'll just go to work and spend most of my day out of the house if i can like i couldn't even make noise in the room because you know the, she'd be like i can hear you from the living room which was right downstairs <laughs> so i just had to be completely silent in my room if i was in my room but um, back to what you were saying, a lot of the artists that don't succeed, I well, the first thing I felt when I got to LA was it's such a big place that I felt extremely uh, small and uh, no, I wouldn't say alone, but like just like it's a huge place and you're you're just an individual that has no money, no you know no one you know, no one you 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 can rely on for help. So I, I you can feel you. Can, feel pretty lost when you get here um, and then once you get on your feet the other way it's a weird place is you know it's a place of like status and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. celebrity worship and money worship so you can kind of get lost in like the status symbols and like not focus on the right things yeah. you know especially and, when you're a younger person and uh, you really are not built as a person to you know exactly uh, to be like sure uh, about you know your uh, look on the world uh, how it should function and all this so you can really you know if you end up in a bad uh, company uh, can it can lead you in all sorts of different ways uh, and yeah. paths in life so uh, yeah uh, 
Yeah, that's uh, that's tricky, and I, I always think of, I can't help myself, but I always think uh, about those who you know, d- d- all of those untold stories, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's sad. I I've seen some artists give up, and it it breaks my heart because I hate hearing it. And I'm like, you never know what someone's going through, so you can't ever yeah. judge. But I I just hate seeing someone say, "I'm giving up. I'm gonna go be like." you know a construction guy or something like that and yeah that's fine but it's just you sh- i don't know i feel like it, art it's not that hard being a concept artist yeah. i'm not I, and i'm not judging the people that do give up like great like maybe it wasn't for them and they didn't want to do it but it it's just like it, there's a book by Uh, Stephen Pressfield it's a super like rudimentary caveman book it's called Mm -hmm. going pro Mm -hmm. and it has a very like um, simple he literally it's like a paragraph per page and it's pretty basic but it's more like advices yeah and he's just like he, he talks about his journey of becoming a writer and he said it took him like I don't know how long 20 30 40 years to become a professional writer but looking back he knows what the difference was and the whole book is called the name of the title or the book is called going pro and mm-hmm. how do you become pro and why people don't become pro and why they suffer and why they always think oh why aren't I XYZ and he talks about how he used to like pick apples and on farms for like a few bucks a day and you know it, it, like it was a seasonal thing and you you would just float as you know through the farms and there was a whole culture people would show up and then they'd go off and you'd never hear from them again and you make all these friendships mm-hmm. and and then you sleep in like a barn all of you together and and that's it and he was doing that for many years and and all he wa- he would talk about is I'm going to be a writer one day I'm going to be a writer one day and he would never actually do it and he realized that one day something snapped in him and he just decided this is it I'm gonna just end it and he had been saving all of his apple picking money and he had apparently saved enough for a few months to live on and he locked himself up and he realized what going pro meant for himself which was like every single day and that's kinda what I was talking about with Scott like you just show up and you just put in the work it's that easy and you just do it over and over and over and over and over again and you focus on nothing else but that and you, your only goal and the other thing he says is to like simplify it down to like just like one thing you have to do and that's it and that your only goal is to just do the work and put in the time because mm-hmm. there is no shortcut and that's with everything I mean and this also you know, doesn't guarantee but it yeah. uh, just puts you in a better position than uh, if you don't yeah. do it. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I sometimes I kind of, because I, I go through YouTube videos a lot uh, on various topics and then, you know, you're also, you're, you're looking for answers uh, uh, for certain questions. And then uh, every now and then I end up like on some type of mo- motivational video. I don't search for a motivational video, but you know, you just ended up on something. and. Yeah, and I'm always kind of pissed when uh, certain people, you know, I mean, they're making money online, of course. Uh, it's all mm-hmm. about the views and and, and likes and and whatnot. Uh, uh, but uh, it's like a it's a misleading in a way. Uh, for example, the book you mentioned can be much more useful for someone than uh, uh, the person who is convincing him that you know you will succeed if you do this and that, you know, and then yeah. uh, it it doesn't. It, it really doesn't mean that you will succeed you know it, it, i mean the, yeah. the 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 maybe uh the list of uh things that you have to do that this guy ma- is mentioning maybe that makes sense of course to be in a better position yeah. as we said but it doesn't guarantee anything you know yeah well i think the naturally i've always known not to look at those guys <laughs> but i can see that there is a certain allure to those people because i uh people always just want like simple answers like they there's they want an an answer to something else that's how do I describe like they think that it's more complicated than just doing it 
mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And they, they try to make it more complicated. And as soon as they do that, they become vulnerable to these predators that want money <laughs> for these motivational talks. Like, oh, come to my, uh, like, you know, retreat for $8,000, $20,000, and I'll teach you how to become rich or how to become, you know, successful. Yeah. Um, so I, I totally get it. But yeah, the simple act is you don't need anyone to tell you how to succeed. But it's, just, it's hard to resist when someone is saying, you know, this is the right. Uh, I mean, I've been working in, in advertising for probably 10 yeah. years. And yeah. then, and I, I myself, you know, when I'm in a bad situation, I yeah. tend to click, you know, and, and think to myself, yeah. maybe I should try. But then the voice tells me, oh, come on, man, you, you know who, who these people are and what's, yeah, yeah. what's behind. I mean, I mean, it, it might even work for some people, but uh, they're not doing it to help you. You know, they're doing it to make yeah, more money. It, so. Exactly. And I, 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 well, the, I currently want to get into real estate investing mm-hmm. and I, you know, that's one of my like long-term goals, uh, 10, 20, 30 year goals. I fully plan to transition eventually. And, uh, uh it's just like a business thing that I've always wanted to do. Uh, you know, owning commercial properties and, uh, just like apartment complexes and stuff. And, um, that's a big but shift. Any, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and, but I still plan to. My ultimate goal is to do that and have fully self-sustaining business, and then just do oil paintings or personal mm-hmm. paintings for fun, and not really have to work in the professional industry uh, if I don't want to. Uh, mm-hmm. Just it, it, I want it to be a choice. Um, so um, the, the uh, across there, like I, you see them way more <laughs> where you type in like oh real estate investing and you just get like up just hammered with like you know uh they're motivational speakers in quotations um and I'm they i'm watching a few of the shows on the uh on, on tv yeah. like from but you, you, from you can <laughs> see their predatory look that's crazy like they, they're, they're totally it's just crazy. like it's a complete business for them. No, they to- so they're totally crazy. I mean, yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I mean, we're laughing here. We were looking at. It, yeah. But I, I totally understand that it drives them because they got get like the uh, I don't know, like five million dollar fee for for uh, for a condo they sell for I don't know like uh, yeah one hundred and thirty million or something like that. So, but yeah. they're, they're literally crazy people. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I guess at the end of the day, the lesson is. If, if you ever need a motivational video, I have found one that works, that I do if I'm ever feeling really, really down, and I, I just, it, it, like, I, I used to not believe in burning out, but, uh, and then I burnt out when I was 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just overworking, and I thought, oh, I'm invincible. I'll, it'll never happen to me. It's good. Oh, those people, they're not special like me. I'm special. <laughs> I'm not gonna burn out. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, I, I had this feeling of like I literally wanted to vomit every time I thought about work for some mm-hmm. reason. Um, anyway, this uh, the Arnold. It's a if you just Google Arnold, the speech that broke the internet <laughs> with, from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so simple, and he, it's like when I heard that, I was like, "Thank you. This is this is it." Like he's like, "When you're not working, someone else is. I when found, you're not getting, I, I, better, I will uh, share it in." Uh, in yeah. uh, I'll share it in a uh, chat here in uh, yeah. and I, I know YouTube. that Arnold had his, you know, like he's gotten bad things about him, but it doesn't invalidate the things that he says in this speech where I was like, what, what was the worst thing about him uh, from, uh, I, he's, you know, he slept with his housemaid okay, and had so, like, a kid. So, yeah, yeah okay. it's like, it's just personal life, <laughs> but happens. obviously it doesn't discount his like, achievements as an individual yeah. and you know um but it's uh it's honestly that's the one over the years uh the one, if, if, every time i hear it i'm just like yes <laughs> this is it that's it right there thank you um it's it's really great if someone needs motivation that's the one thing to listen to and he doesn't sugarcoat it he says like i mean it's hilarious he says he used to visualize lifting trophies over his head every time he was doing bench presses <laughs> and that's why he was smiling all the time and it's a little cheesy but 
it's what you were saying like you're saying that these gurus say you'll succeed and i guess what they're you know the, the whole point is that you if you're working and you believe you're not going to succeed you're going to lose motivation so you have to at least believe that you're going to succeed in order to continue working you know but um, for m much uh, stronger driving force for some people and me included is actually the process of creation so th and this is this is when uh, it's it's a great match when you find the perfect project that fits you know your soul let's say you know your artistic soul uh, movie a game whatever you know when it's something oh yes i want to i want to work on that you know because mm -hmm. I, I have ideas on how to develop that and that's amazing i mean when you find that kind of a uh a, a, a job it's i guess it's much yeah. better feeling than when someone forces you to do something that you really hate doing you know and especially well, if it's art but something that you consider like real trash yeah so. well i i will say like working on projects that you want to uh it again goes back to the stephen pressfield going pro book like you just do it and it'll happen and i firmly believe it like I the only way someone's going to know about you out there is if you're posting mm -hmm. if you're if you're putting the work and I realized you know just this year actually I was like wow I launched my entire career off of Google where the my first job offer that I ever got for Snow White and the Huntsman the director Rupert Sanders mm -hmm. uh, he found me on Google because of some cheesy painting I had done and he really liked it I'm not uh, dissing his taste of but he he really liked it and he wanted to get in touch and I was 20 21 at the time mm -hmm. and he his assistant called and he was like hey do you want to do you want to work uh, on slowing on the huntsman and I was like I'm, I'm still in school and I said well take the term off and you can <laughs> well work. that means that you're cheaper yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, fine with exactly <laughs> and I actually <clears throat> un undercut my rate i didn't i i charged intern rates and they totally loved it yeah, <laughs> but uh i and i i thought i was like asking for an, a crazy amount of money and he they were like sure and i was like oh oh damn i i guess i fucked up because what messed up because uh they uh they they didn't bat an eye but anyway i, I had a lot of fun it I was two, a lot. Two, uh, 2012 uh I'm, I'm, 2000 2011 yeah i'm i went to uh imdb just to check uh yeah it was re i think it was released in 2012 mm -hmm. but there was like the pre-production phase and then the filming it took over a year year and a half so like end of 2010 was when i was working on it but uh yeah it was i mean you you worked on a lot of uh films and uh, yeah. i see some are these series maybe uh, yeah so I mean when did you find time to work on a game project <laughs> uh, I mean yeah working on film is like a lot of time I guess yeah well uh, films <clears throat> every time you work on is as an artist depends on what type what stage you come mm -hmm. on come in on and the, the length and scope of the project so for for like Snow White and the Huntsman I was on it for like three to five months mm -hmm. and then I could have continued but I actually my uh, art center term was starting back up and I was like I'm gonna go back to school and so I uh, ended up leaving and they were happy but uh, so um, but most movies uh, you spend three to five months the only movie ever that I've spent more than that on is the Avatar sequels yeah. and uh, can't really talk about it of course mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's public knowledge uh, at least this bit um, but I spent uh, you know uh, quite a bit of time there and then I left there to go uh, art direct production design uh, project for DreamWorks mm -hmm. and then after that I went and uh, yeah, just uh, and working on game projects. It's just like the hard the hard part about being a freelancer in the film industry is uh, keeping your name alive out there mm -hmm. and uh, 
making sure the next project's coming in. I will say that in my experience, the most frustrating part is like, and this has happened almost on, uh, to a comical degree, where I've been looking for something for like a few weeks and it's been radio silent and then a job calls me up and they're like, hey, can you start? And I'm like, oh yes, of course, yeah, let's do it. And then the second I say yes, literally at 30 minutes later, I get three other job offers from three different mm -hmm. movies and it happens every single time. Yeah. Um, so you, you just can't control that stuff. The work dries up and then when it comes in, it's like 20 offers at once. Um, and you just have to be a professional and mm -hmm. say, you know, I already committed. I'm doing this other thing as much as I want to do your thing. This is maybe, I mean, it's very relatable to what we talked before about the, even, uh, you know, uh, start building a career uh, in, a, in a place like that. But uh, also, uh, it really makes sense to, you know, in your free time, you know, when there are no gigs to really go. Yep over the top with your personal stuff yes and that's exactly uh, I, I, I can't stress that enough because it, what I've I mean I was actually discussing this with one of my friends Zach Zachary Berger he's a really good creature designer on Avatar right now um, and we were discussing it a few months back we were saying man it really sucks because in our industry we we work so long and hard all the time in the movie industry, and then when a movie ends, you're too scared to take a vacation or enjoy your time off because you don't know when the next job offer will be. <laughs> so then you're just sitting, not trying to to make you know big moves and just be available and uh, you know get your name out there and just start looking for work again. So. Uh, it's it's like a, that's kind of the freelance life so I think in that regard you have to plan your own time off and commit to it but again the one thing I can say is that the I've noticed there's a direct correlation between not posting and work drying up all the time and you can't be like oh that guy's you know uh, he's not even that great and he's getting all the jobs while he's posting you know yeah, so yeah. people are seeing him and not you so uh, when you when yeah I mean you deserve to take a break when you're off you know work maybe work four hours a day on your personal stuff instead of 12 hours a day um, and then start posting and get your name out there and you know you're your own agent in this industry and you have to keep your name out there. If you don't put in the work, no one's going to find you. Yes, definitely. I, I would just add that you really also do uh, have to improve constantly because mm -hmm. uh, uh, on social media, the, the, the competition is so high. Uh, yeah. There are so many. Uh, I mean, f I, I, this has, in, in recent five or six years, this has become my profession, you know, to find artists, you know and literally every day i see like five new ones that i've never heard about you know mm. and i'm like well, how is this possible i mean yeah I, because i'm really informed you know like people send me other people's works you know to check and uh, how is it possible that every day i can find like five new guys who have never seen or girls you know doing doing amazing stuff it's like it is did, did everyone insane. start doing art you know <laughs> I know. It, it, when I there see some eighteen year old concept artists out there right now, and I'm just shaken to my core because I'm yeah. just like, I man, at eighteen I was learning how to draw straight lines. <laughs> uh, our like, our youngest speaker ever at the event, I think, yeah. he had a talk while he was seventeen, and oh uh, to goodness. be honest, I never ever asked him like, how old is he? You know, oh, wow. I found I found out that at the event, but uh, the way that he did things and the way that he you know present himself and uh, the way that he d did his talk and presentation, he would never say that someone who has seventeen. You know, he would say, "Okay, this guy has worked like for the last fifteen years in wow. you know, this kind of yeah." Stuff. So it's it's, like, <laughs> it's the benefit of growing up, and because there's. Uh, I, I like this this generation is super 
lucky and blessed and also cursed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I, I've spoken about it to a few of the younger artists that I've mentored over the years or spoken to. Um, they they get so uh, it's it's I mean there's a term in you know investing is called analysis paralysis mm -hmm. where there is so much information that you just paralyzed because you don't know what to do anymore because there's so much to do. And on the other hand, if you just pick something and just do it, you're you're like these 17 year old prodigies where you, you're so good. Because when I was just in 2000, I think like the iPhone came out in 2006, 2007, I don't even know. And since then the world has changed so much. But I remember uh, in 2004, uh, trying to watch something on YouTube, it was it was like the world's greatest endeavor on dial-up. Like you couldn't watch anything because uh, everything was so slow. And now it's like you go on YouTube and you just type in how to do this, and you have like a million different answers on concept art or 3D or any program that you choose. Um, so the it's, it has been an exponential growth, and it's it's great for those artists that are taking advantage of it. And it's also I think. A lot of artists they they get really hung up on what should I choose? Maybe I'll just watch more videos and see, and then they just get frustrated and not do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens to everyone, I think, and at some point, and uh, it's hard because it's uh, you're basically all the time you're like uh, in, in a race, you know, competing with your friends, colleagues, you know, people who you don't know but you know their work and it can be stressful especially if you know you have like a certain amount of money f f that you have to make for to pay your bills and uh, you know yeah it, it can be like really uh, really stressful uh, but um, let's talk a bit about your uh, involvement in the upcoming uh, IFCC 2020 online uh, program uh, <coughs> we have a a clip a long clip prepared uh, I will just I will I will play it in the in the background and uh, can you can you share a few words about that and about uh, your you know plans uh, for uh, you know you as an educator for the future and uh, is this something you know besides uh, the real estate thing is this something that you also plan on doing uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I, first of all, I, I remember hearing about Blender even last year, and I was like, <laughs> Blender, okay. <laughs> and now it's like the greatest program ever made, in my opinion. Um, and I, it has more updates than, you know, software, uh, Cough, Autodesk, Cough. Um, they, you know, who you pay like thousands of dollars a year to just not own, and you still don't get updates and things aren't working. Um, I, Blender has its quirks, and it's not that, you know, there, there are certain things that, you know, if you're used to other programs, you get frustrated, but if you just look past it, I I will say it's it's pretty great. And of course, Maya, 3ds Max, all those the programs, they're awesome, and, um, but, yeah, it's uh, and you you can only you know Blender has its limits. Like you can't do full on VFX work mm -hmm. uh, with it. Uh, in my opinion, I'm sure some VFX artists out there will prove me wrong, and then uh, I'm wrong, and I'm happy to admit it. But uh, uh, so far, and you know, just like at least I'm sure you need to optimize Blender a ton by ha knowing a lot about it to do mm -hmm. real like quality VFX work. And I, I, I've seen people do VFX work, but you're you're lying to yourself if you think it looks exactly the same as it looks from 3ds Max, Maya, or some of these other programs that are you know have been around for so long. And but with all that said, you know I'm not doing VFX work. I'm doing concept work. Mm -hmm. And for that, I say you don't need any other program done. <laughs> it's end of story. Mm -hmm. You can sculpt in here. You can model in here. You can even 2D animate in here. They have a they have a compositing uh, tab over there, which you can even composite your uh, like depth pass and all these other things. Basically, it has everything. I mean, 
except Photoshop. But it has its own grease pencil stuff mm -hmm. that you can, you know, uh, play around with. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's a game changer. I hope that nothing happens to it and they ha continue to have the energy that they have to keep making it amazing. Because mm -hmm. uh, it would suck if, you know, two years from now, it just, <laughs> like, the updates died off and you're like, yeah. oh, crap. I mean, so, everything comes to an end, I guess, yeah, but uh, yeah. it will definitely, even if it does happen, it will definitely affect uh, oh. all the future projects in the in a good way, because uh, just if you analyze their approach to developing it, and it, it, and it, it was a hard work behind it, uh, because they're here, I don't know, for 20 years now or something, but... Uh, uh definitely one of the best examples of uh, uh open source software out there uh, yeah. i would say next to maybe something like which is not computer graphics related uh but more like a website uh, uh, uh related to the wordpress platform uh they mm -hmm. have like a lot of similarities where like thousands and thousands of people or, or, or from around the world are you know uh contributing with their solutions you know which yeah. then gets implemented either to core version of the software or as an add-on mm. yeah no it's pretty great and i have huge respect for the team i mean they're they're, they're you know changing the sort of because we were getting you know the, there was a complacency that's come on with all the softwares in our field and everyone's been feeling frustrated because they, uh, I mean, I felt like I was being taken advantage of, but I didn't have any choice. I have to either pay up and not own this software or not work in the industry. So mm -hmm. I, it's, it's really great to see that they're, at least I, I hope, you know, they're going to create pressure for all the other companies that mm -hmm. are going to start losing customers mm -hmm. if they don't, you know, continue to make their programs great. So. Mm -hmm. And, but I but, think it's already affecting uh, uh, mm -hmm. them, and I, I I see changes. I see mm -hmm. the way they uh, uh, like commercial uh, uh, br uh, packages, brands, whatever, are uh, uh, they they have like taken all the, the totally different route uh, in the, their promotional activities. A lot of them uh, are now including, you know, a better let's say connection with with blender you know because they're yeah, aware yeah, of yeah. the fact that, that even their People own customers are, are yeah leaving. i think that the only one of like maybe softwares like uh, you know houdini and uh, i don't know we, we, mm -hmm. which others could i mention but uh, uh, those who really still have like big advantages in certain areas you know uh, yeah are not maybe scared of losing their users but yeah. uh, i see that all of them are kind of changing their uh, you know approach and i was just texting a few days back with uh, one uh, really famous uh, med painter uh, and concept artist uh, i won't mention his name because i don't know if he'll be okay with it but uh i just said to him like uh, that uh, i think that for a long time, some of the software companies are, were uh, uh, putting their, you know, uh, software out there, uh, uh, which could be like easy, which are were easily crackable, you know. And uh, uh, I, my, I'm not like a fan of uh, conspiracy theories or anything like that, but uh, 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 but I think that they did it on purpose, you know, to to uh, to allow, you know. Uh, someone to just you know crack every new version of their software uh, mm -hmm. i mean other companies have proven that it can be the software can be protected really well you know so but this was also in a way free commercial for them you know it was mm -hmm. a free promotion for them because uh, if there weren't so many um uh, you can you can i don't know like maybe uh, for example, if you take uh, Photoshop, you know, if there weren't so many pirate version of, of Photoshop, 
there's no way that it would be so popular as it is today you know yeah because I, I know at least for the eastern europe you know uh, until like 10 years ago i didn't know anyone who had like a legal version of uh, of the software yeah you know yeah. so and it was super popular you know everyone was using it uh, but yeah. uh, but then again uh, maybe it's a smart way because uh, you know you get more and more users but what's cool about uh, open source software is that uh, it's more the communication is more ho honest between the end user and the developer and uh, they're also you know they found their way of financing you know they probably have support from I know that now they have this program where people can you know uh, yeah. uh, support them but they probably you know apply for various funds or uh, locally uh, through their like uh, government or the or the city they probably get some funds which help them you know to stay yeah. alive for for 20 years you know so yeah. yeah so you can see this this one that's playing in the stream right now mm -hmm. that was the creature was all made in blender i sculpted it 100 percent in blender it's mm -hmm. not that great so i hit it a lot with lighting and fog and all this other stuff but i plan to release these uh tutorials soon mm -hmm. this is one of them i haven't posted about it so this is kind of like a first reveal on these paintings but um the uh, it was fun painting this one. It's like I, I was just testing all the the sculpting tools of Blender and like the symmetry options. And so, is this seeing... also related to your uh, content for the for the for the IFCC? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. um, I I'll probably pick. Uh, I still have to establish what I'll be, you, you know, because it's like a forty five minute window, and I have like. 80 hours of content so I'll have to choose a particular thing and then just do like a quick walkthrough and because uh, I, I want people to feel like they got something mm -hmm. you know of value instead of just a time-lapse well uh, you, you're not uh, maybe this comes in good as uh, useful information you're not limited to 45 yeah so it can be you know even yeah. more but uh, yeah. I, I prefer to yeah we'll see how it goes but uh, I'll choose a snippet and I mean there's so much to talk about I, I guess the fundamental thing always is like a lot of people they keep trying to move past it but it's it's the most important thing which is drawing and painting and like basic knowledge of this stuff is is crucial because you don't know what good choices are where to put the lighting why to put the lighting there and a lot of times even as uh, an artist has been doing it for 10 years mm -hmm. uh, I could try to tell you that I know the right way to put it but there are infinite ways to make something look good uh, and it's it all comes down to choices like and the only way you know those choices are if you put in the time and and the, uh, on the fundamentals and you know you can create a silhouette that's you know reading a creature from this distance and why when to use haze to you know make the creature disappear and mm -hmm. give a sense of depth and scale and value because when i was starting out um i would think oh well how do okay black and white but why do you put this value there in the distance and not closer how do you know that's the right value and i would constantly think that but i never asked that and i realized you know now after knowing what value it should be which is the correct answer is that there is no correct answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the correct answer is that you know it intrinsically and in, you know after doing it for so much that you know it's the correct value. That's, that's what um, I wanted to add, uh, add uh, because you have like so uh, uh, much information stored in your head uh, from yeah. your last 15 years of practicing and working on projects so uh, you probably you know do some things by instinct uh, yeah and uh, so which is another reason why it pays off to practice a lot yeah I mean but at the end of the day there is no right answer it's subjective but there is a right answer so like these infinite choices are based on a foundation foundational study on on like what's perspective what's shape design what's you know uh, like what shape makes something look aggressive versus mm -hmm. cute versus soft versus sharp um, versus like military versus stealthy versus 
you know, I, all these like words that you can throw at it. Um, all of those things, in order to invoke those feelings, you need to know the fundamentals. And the fundamentals can only be understood if you've put in the time and you do it over and over. And uh, like, because I see a lot of artists, a lot of the junior artists, they get like really um, on Instagram whenever I post some of the speed paintings, they're like, they, they message me about like the brush economy and like how I know which brushes to use but I didn't make any of these brushes I just picked them up like random ones every time I start a painting I end up using a different brush because um, the principle is that you know your shape design you know the shadow the design of the shadows the design of the light and all these other things mm -hmm. and then you, you could use any brush to create it um, so that's mainly the thing and I'm I think that my tutorials I will not be uh, catering them to like a totally beginner audience mm -hmm. but uh, I uh, just because there's so much to cover in that regard um, so I'd have to just go completely uh, you know towards like an intermediate audience or people that have some sort of uh, knowledge mm -hmm. uh, will you spend it, some time uh uh, during the IFCC program, uh, or at least uh, the plan to provide like uh, more detailed information how this potential uh, either mentoring or, or series of tutorial thing will work in, in reality. Uh, so, so, you know, we can just more announce it properly be before uh, the, uh, the event starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Do you want me to talk about yeah, it now, was, or are you saying just no, like think just, about just, it? Uh, yeah, I was just uh, asking. Like, do you think you'll have like more detailed information about it? Uh, how how do this uh, how how will this work? In yeah. Reality? So I th yeah. I think what I'll what I'll end up doing is because uh, the the kaiju piece that you saw mm -hmm. here, um, it went through the, the I I had a I didn't include all the videos here because I have like crazy you know amount of. Uh, hours of footage mm -hmm. but I'm going to consolidate it all it won't uh, when I say I won't cater it towards a totally beginner audience is because I don't want to be sitting there talking about how to use blender mm -hmm. you know like oh this is a hot key on how to move around in the views you know viewport because you could like there are free tutorials about that on YouTube I don't need to explain that to you <laughs> to people um, and if they're li looking for that, then I, I wouldn't be able to help them. Mm -hmm. But what I can talk about is the process mm -hmm. of how to go from, uh, okay, this is the design process, this is how you plan, or even touch Blender, you do a few qu quick chicken scratch sketches in Photoshop, and you get your idea down. Then you go look at your research, you get it all together, and then you jump into Blender, and you already have a good idea of where you're going to go because if you don't, you're going to end up in this like uh, infinite, you know, area of possibilities mm -hmm. where you're just you you don't know where to go, and it's worse than it is in Photoshop because in Photoshop you just have a flat canvas, so you can do some random shape design and pull something out of it eventually. Um, but in Blender, I'm I suppose Vitali, someone like Vitali who's been you know master of 3D can you know paint in 3d like i paint in photoshop <laughs> where you know just like random shape design and he pulls something crazy out of it but for the most part for everyone else and including myself i i you know 3d it's still a beast and you always want to come at it with a plan of attack and uh so we'd be talking about that and then i would just show the process of how powerful blender is and eevee because everything was real time. I, I sculpted everything. I textured it using procedural textures in Blender. Mm -hmm. I implemented a bit of uh, Megascans uh, library, just like some of their rocks, assets, and stuff. Um, and I put that in there. And then I just rendered out the scenes, multiple camera angles. Um, I, I'll be you know talking about the various plugins that I use to, for the sculpting add-ons. I mean the modeling add-ons in Blender, which really, really changed the game. Uh, one of them is Hard Ops, uh, and it's brilliant uh, what the the creator has done. 
and uh, yeah, we we go, we'll go through all those process, and I'll try to keep it clear, concise, and a pretty good overview of how to get from point A to point B. Um, and basically, like the whole my whole approach is uh, a lot of the tutorials I see, they're super great, you know. Um, and I was trying to figure out um, what's what other people are doing that they they haven't done that I could fill the gap for people that are looking for extra knowledge. And one of the things I saw, and it, it requires a lot more work on my end, uh, so I'm not sure if I bit off more than I can chew, but um, I, it basically, it's going showing the whole pipeline, showing the whole process of creating an image, thinking about the design, thinking about like what the end goal is, putting the research together. So I will have to release it in parts. Um, and for IFCC, I'll probably focus in on a, like I'll do a general overview. And depending on um, if, you know, I should focus on the Photoshop part or the Blender part, uh, I, th I think people want to see Blender more these days. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably, you know, spend time on the Blender part instead and leave the Photoshop part uh, just as like mm -hmm. a quick review and uh, yeah so from what I see from these uh, shots uh, I even think that it's not so important you know which I mean of course it will be easier for those who use blenders to follow what you're doing in the interface but uh, for someone with you know knowledge of how to use a certain yeah. 3d program I, I guess it's all the same you know since uh, yeah. more or less they could replicate it uh, in uh, in uh, software of, of their choice so uh, but uh, yeah blend blender is the thing <laughs> these days yeah. so it looks amazing yeah. by the way thanks um, but you can see my like I'm building this robot the the, the mech mm -hmm. uh, inspired by a machining Kreger you're using a meta balls here right yeah, it's all metal balls. But before, in the background, you can see I did those super rudimentary sketches. I'll probably release time lapses because they're just you know normal, straightforward sketching and painting in Photoshop. Um, so I'm planning on releasing a ton of just free time lapse tutorials mm -hmm. uh, on my own YouTube channel. Um, and uh, but eventually, and uh, but for now, you can see that before even getting to this basic metal ball phase I made sure to sketch in Photoshop first because mm -hmm. I didn't want to get lost um, and just try because you could design in 3d and and this is what I do here because my finished design ends up looking like none of the designs you see up there but it, it at least gave me something to go for some guide uh, yeah yeah well, it's and, much uh, easier to follow something, you know, because then yeah. you don't have these moments uh, where you stop and like for a few hours you're just like <laughs> touching yeah. the mesh and not sure where to where to continue. So, yeah, uh, I, w w since we mentioned Meta Balls, I really hope they'll bring back the because in in, in two seven nine there was uh, you you know about the remesh modifier uh, in mm -hmm. the modifier stack, right? And then you have like few options there and mm -hmm. what we had before was also like a a, a meta ball remesh which was mm. like really cool because uh for example uh sometimes i help myself uh with some concept uh, by doing actually an animation of something and then mm -hmm. stop at some frame you know and continue mm. from there and the cool thing with the meta ball, ball uh, modifier was was because you can uh, animate modifiers, you know, so you could you, yeah. could you could get some unexpected results with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I hope they bring that back. So so what are we looking at now? This this is in, so inside Photoshop. The, well, yeah, I was just gonna say. So this is I have Photoshop open in the background all the time, and when I'm sketching or I'm working in 3D. I get sometimes I find myself I'm like trying to push and pull forms and it's taking forever. Mm -hmm. Blender is great and super fast, but it's still not fast enough to work like this, where you're just like drawing random lines. And because what I'm trying to figure out is I didn't like the proportions mm -hmm. that were going on that, that were coming out in Blender, and I felt like it was too bulky. So I wanted to measure it in Photoshop and Side View and just see if I could change the silhouette 
and make it work. So I was just I put out all the ideas that I wanted to. And I do this all the time. If uh, any time I get held up in 3D, I just take a quick screen grab, print screen, copy and paste into Photoshop mm -hmm. and a new canvas. And uh, just, yeah. Uh, and I guess I decided I like the old proportion partially better. So kind of added that in there. I think I end up, yeah, end up just not doing it. And then I got frustrated and then I just started measuring, like, because. You, there's of course the golden ratio, mm -hmm. you know, you know, or just like a rule of thirds, where you never want something to be split in half visually. It, it it's a, like a easy rule to remember is it's like a third is is a good way to split things up, um, or even a quarter, but just never do half because it's something it just doesn't look right and it kind of looks plain and boring. So. Um, it kind of helped me see that here, and I, I think I ended up moving this ultimately to break it up into thirds, um, at least in side view. So Blender has this super, super cool thing that I've never seen in any other program, and it's called a shrink wrap, mm -hmm. right? So you can project uh, an item mm -hmm. from one mesh to another, mm -hmm. as you can see here. But and it may be, you know, I, I think some programs have that, but mm -hmm. they don't have this. You take the edges of one object that you want to you see what I did there? I mm -hmm. expanded the mm -hmm. edges there. Mm -hmm. And you, you assign a vertex weight mm -hmm. that's that's uh, getting less and less. You did this so you, you do this like for to a true vertex group. So Yeah, select, so you assign selecting. it to a vertex mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you, you you're projecting when you project the using the shrink wrap projection, you tell it to use the vertex group instead of the entire mm -hmm. object. So then the weight distribution going from you know 1.0 to mm -hmm. 0 0.8 to 0 0.6 to 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and zero, mm -hmm. all those edges. After that, it just become it 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 does it much more smoothly, mm -hmm. and then you uh, you have like this really nice filleted edge that's merging one form into another that would take you forever to actually model out yeah and yeah it's a amazing amazing set of tools and especially what you mentioned about the vertex group so imagine also when this ends up being for example when a 3d modeler does the like a, a proper uh, uh, retopologized mesh then imagine what you can do like in an with, with these vertex groups you know uh, yeah. uh, 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 what can you do in animation you know uh, yeah. so uh, it, you can also like do all, all sorts all sorts of crazy things with the uh, transformations and you know resizing stuff but partially and then uh, yeah amazing amazing uh, you, you can see i'm trying to remesh the legs here with the meta balls but their current remeshing for metaballs is not so great. It's the only one in Blender that kind of it's very disappointing because it kind of messes up all the edges and the smoothing grips. It just doesn't come out right. So you actually have to remesh by hand for some reason. Um, but uh, you, and the it's especially noticeable around like the creases or where objects are bending because mm -hmm. uh, all the the way the meta balls are structured at least their geo mm -hmm. when you apply it it just it doesn't look it doesn't work well with the smoothing mm -hmm. grips well, we have a, someone was brave enough to ask a question so we have first question uh, uh, so uh, he, he just said he got frustrated. Does yeah, I see yeah, that. Okay, yeah. you, can, you can read so, it then. And, yeah. uh, does it ever happen to you that you can't seem to solve? Yeah, it totally does. And um, so it, you saw me pause for a little while there, the video. It wasn't actually paused. I had just left. <laughs> I, I was getting, I actually did get frustrated. I walked up and my, I didn't know the video was still recording. So I left for like 20 minutes and I went to go hang out with my family. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, get a drink of water. Uh, I don't know. It's, I sometimes go for a walk or do some push-ups or just go down and hang out with my son and my wife, and uh, and then just come back and apply to try it again, try it from a different. And sometimes if I'm spending too long on a particular area, like the arm or something or the head, and I'm getting frustrated, I'll just stop. And I'll move on to another another part of the design, 
and then I'll come back later and and I'll have an idea about it later and it, you know it's just you you don't want to be stuck eternally in the same problem trying to solve it over and over um, a lot of times I find you just kind of walk away from it and come back to it and it becomes a lot easier the second time uh, just a second so uh, just tell me I, I was watching the how you were solving uh, uh, the arm the 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 left arm uh, just like few 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 minutes back so uh, you were also uh, using the metaballs uh, uh, in a way uh, to you know, like do booleans uh, between mm -hmm. them, right? Yeah. So do you so, would then extrude? For example, you would get you would be able to get a, a barrel with the with yeah. the metaballs. Yeah, totally. So, um, like a barrel wouldn't be the best use of the metaballs because mm -hmm. it has like undulating you know, like a form getting bigger and smaller. Mm -hmm. So you just do like a normal straight cylinder for that. But like anything like the bulging forms that are connecting mm -hmm. with the metal balls, uh, you generally have, I mean, you could have a, a live subtract happening. So the difference between a live subtract and a regular Boolean option is like the great thing about Blender is that it lets you keep modifiers uh, in Booleans active even after the boolean has been uh, a function has been executed it moves everything into the cutters uh, collection that you see on the right there and uh, you can you know go back to it turn it on and modify the cutter and change the boolean look right but sometimes with metaballs uh, it, it becomes a problem with the way uh, it's just I think it's the way it's written right now maybe they'll change it in the future but you have to actually commit the meta ball to geometry instead of making it, you know, keeping it editable at all times. Um, and then you can do your Boolean operations on top of it. And I think that's what I ended up doing here because it wasn't letting me do what I needed to. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a blender, blender, you know, mm -hmm. thing right now, which I'm positive they'll get back to in some sometime in the future. But, uh, I mean, it's a huge uh, uh, set of possible set of tools inside the just one software. So mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, it's I, I I'm even surprised how they managed to develop all of it, all of those tools at once. You know, because uh, different people are doing different stuff there. So yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I really like uh, the results you're getting with Metaballs. I love Metaballs. Uh, I did a lot of tests with it, mostly animation. Uh, but it's so cool. Uh, uh, one of the guys I remember a presentation for from the I think it was Blender Conference 2018 maybe or 17. He did like a, a chicken animation only with metaballs. It's mm. so, so amazing to see the possibilities and the advantage that this uh, uh, you know uh, transition between metaballs that give you you know for like your this design. Uh, that you're doing this type of design this language is like perfect uh, usage yeah. of, the, of them for the hard surface stuff it's like perfect and I, I can't think of any other method that would be faster than this you know yeah no exactly for this it's uh, it specifically like works great for mm -hmm. bulgy designs and stuff it wouldn't work great for maybe like designing a car but if you did like a a car that was inspired in this vein, I suppose you could do some forms that are, you know. But uh, the, the thing that you showed at the beginning of this pro process uh, about uh, this uh, 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 vertex uh, groups that can mm -hmm. be, you know, applied to, to a certain vertex, uh, this also can help you, for example, if you're bringing totally different type of shape to the design with more like mm -hmm. maybe sharp edges uh, this this like easily easily be used you know to melt with this uh yeah what you have here so uh yeah fantastic uh fantastic really, yeah really the thing awesome i love way. about blender is you see the bags around the waist of the robot mm -hmm. dude i mean and if i was in cinema 40 3 ds max uh you know, or Moto, I, I wouldn't have been able to make those bags, but I literally, I just put some cubes together and then I remesh them, 
you join them all together, you remesh them as one singular object, it retopologizes the whole thing, and then you just sculpt on top. And within Blender, within less than 10 minutes, you can make those bags. So something good, and it's super great because you can work on organic and hard surface things at once without switching programs. And I think that's a pretty big game changer for me personally, just not having to go to any other program. Uh, I see these uh, uh, cuts that you have uh, there. Uh, are you using any specific tools for that, like an add-on, or is this just uh, also uh, additional like boolean operation? Oh, so the 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 add-ons that you okay the uh, the software is uh, or the the plugin that I bought. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's like thirty bucks mm -hmm. or forty bucks. Um, it's called hard apps. Mm -hmm. I would right. highly, highly. That's like very popular hard surface. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's basically it's it's using all. It's harnessing the power of Blender and mm -hmm. all the functions that it has. Mm -hmm. But it's just making it easier for you because mm -hmm. like uh, a lot of the functions that uh, it has in there, it would take you like 10, 15 steps sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Or, to do those same functions and you end up not doing them because it takes so long. <laughs> it's not so, easy to cut into like a mesh that's total mess and, and Yeah, you know. yeah. So it'll it you know, they're remeshing a shortcuts and Boolean operations and and it's got and then Master Zeon mm -hmm. I think is the, the creator. He Yeah, he his name is uh, Jerry Perkins. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean for everyone who's listening and haven't tried Blender or this uh, add on uh, Jerry himself has made like tons of videos on how to use this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, super brilliant. And the and the and another one is a uh, 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 box cutter, which is also like, yes. super powerful. Yeah. So um, he th there's like this one thing that he's done, which is you know of course he's harnessing the native power of Blender, but he's changing it in a way mm -hmm. that Blender hasn't used where. He, you can actually like subtract a form into a surface, mm -hmm. and then say like you're you have a box, you're and then you take a cylinder and you shove it into mm -hmm. the box and you're subtracting it. Now where the the subtraction actually happens, you can bevel the whole area mm -hmm. to create an inset that that's like a smooth transition into the box, mm -hmm. and that would take quite a bit of time through just regular modeling or even through um, a uh, just like normal, you know, in the Boolean, you, you modify the cylinder itself. But the he made it super simple in such a way that you just select the edges and you, it's I guess it's like a normal weight or like a vertex weight. But he, you know, it's all in the background, so it assigns it a weight value and then mm -hmm. you bevel it. And it's just like two clicks where it would have been like 20 or 30 mm -hmm. clicks even with how fast Blender is. Yeah, uh, Blender has like different ways of, you know, calculating the, the bevel, bevel value. Uh, so uh, these uh, plugins are kind of, you know, uh, yeah. doing their math, you know, which which solution to put where and uh, that kind of stuff. So it's, but yeah, I, 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 know, I, I think from all the hard uh, surface uh, add-ons, uh, I think that uh, uh, hard ups uh, plus uh, box cutter is the most famous and uh, most widely used, and many many ama amazing concept artists are using it. Um, I, I will also mention two other tools that I've tested, that which are also uh, really really good: are uh, um, Speedflow and Speedflow, Speedflow, and uh, fluent. Uh, uh, those were developed by uh, two different uh, French guys. Uh, also, very powerful stuff. Uh, you can get similar. Uh, so it doesn't really matter which you choose, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, so you know, for those who are using hard ups, it's best to stick with hard ups. You know, you. Yeah. And those who who are not using uh, hard ups, uh, you can test. You know, like all of them, and then see, like which uh, fits better in your workflow. Uh, but yeah. uh, guys like Jerry and uh, and the guys behind uh, these two uh, really uh, have you know <laughs> with, with something uh, 
which is just an add-on, you know, they actually invited uh, a lot of people who weren't using uh, 3D apps before to try uh, 3D and try Blender because, you know, I know like, uh, I know the situation with a lot of concept artists who haven't tried 3D before, but w when they saw what's possible with these add-ons, you know, they said like, okay, I want to test this, you know, this looks great, you know, it looks easy, you know, and then mm. it started working in 3D, so, yeah, uh, it's very interesting to, to yeah, work. but like, there's a learning curve for sure, mm -hmm. when I started uh, Box Cutter and Hard Apps, I was super frustrated, but of course, that's just because you're limited in knowledge and how to use the, mm -hmm. but once you get used to it, it's, it's amazing, it, it really shortens the time mm -hmm. that you're spending, Actually, you, you uh, really don't have to understand the technical aspect of it. Yeah, it's more like a, uh, I mean, you you can, but you don't have to because uh, with a lot of practice, you'll have so uh, many of these trials and errors that you'll, yeah. your brain will know what to use when. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it helps to, in my opinion, though, to have a, uh, like, uh, I suggest if someone's just picking up Blender. They shouldn't start with hard ops on the same day, mm -hmm. um, just because if you if you don't know how Blender works normally, like you you won't if because hard ops is 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 a, I mean they've he's written like manual tools that like do certain things that you can't do just with you know, uh, you could like backwards engineer the thing manually and with you know some click extra clicks you can get the same effect but. Um, you need to understand how modifiers work in Blender, and what how they impact the geometry, because certain times there's a hierarchy problem too. Like certain things aren't working, and you just need to move things around up, up or down a list. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I'd say definitely get hard ops. But if you also are a complete beginner in Blender, then you, you know just figure out how Blender works first as well. Mm -hmm. I myself, I, I was using Blender for at least a few years, two or three years yeah. before I even tested any of the, yeah, any of nice. the, uh, not the add-ons, but the modifiers. <laughs> I just didn't yeah. use modifiers, you know, I was just using it to block out something, you know, and then yeah. maybe bring it to ZBrush or, or somewhere else. And then, you know, which was kind of dumb because if I was using it before uh, I would get much better and faster results <laughs> but uh, definitely I yeah, start with you know start with modeling with simple modeling and then uh, try testing the, the they're like I mean for blenders they're like thousands and thousands of videos on any topic so uh, mm -hmm. it's really uh, interesting uh, area um, just let me check if anyone has asked any additional questions so we don't miss it. Uh, I see this where we're starting out. How long on average would it take you to finish an image, an environment, or a character? Where do you see that? How, on YouTube? Uh, on, on YouTube, yeah. Okay, I missed it. Uh, uh, it's the most recent one. Oh, okay. um, now I see it. So, how long does it take you to do it now? So, when you were starting out. Well, okay. So, when I was starting out, um, I I wasn't as good <laughs> or I wasn't as proficient as I was as I am now so my patience was a lot I had a lot less patience back then because I didn't I didn't know to trust the process if mm -hmm. that makes any sense and I didn't have the experience enough experience to know that it's gonna be okay that the painting looks like complete garbage right now but you know with this step and the next step and the next step, it's gonna look better and better. But uh, that again, I keep saying it, but it only comes with doing it and having the experience to know what to do and when to do it. But I guess on average, before I was spending, like if I tried to make this before, it would have taken weeks because mm -hmm. I wouldn't, you know, it just wouldn't have looked good, and I would have tried to model the creature and the soldiers and. So whereas this, like I something like this, if if I'm working on it twelve hours a day, um, and if I don't have to do it in three D, because uh, right now I've obviously for the sake of the tutorial, I modeled every single thing in three D, and I normally wouldn't do that for a job unless 
I was doing like, you know, a continuation of pieces where it had to be from different angles and stuff. But if it was just one illustration like this, you could just do this in a day. Um, and then if it's going to be like multiple angles, then, you know, you want to model it out. It's going to take a few days. Mm -hmm. And the, I guess the, almost everything I do, the most important thing is, uh, research mm -hmm. which takes up like 50 percent of my time mm -hmm. up front um uh, and during the uh the creation of anything you're like because i do like a first pass research for a few hours or depending on the depth or scope of the image it could be like research for like six seven hours straight where you're just pulling like you know Textures, uh, designs, shapes, uh, color, value, cinematography, uh, you know, film references, actual hard surface references, design reference. So, yeah. Cool. This looks like really, really, really amazing. This uh, visual. Uh, would you recommend anything, any, any, any books on uh, composition? And I asked. Like I'm repeating myself, so those who are listening, they know they always have the same question at some point. Yeah. But uh, I'm very interested in what uh, people are like uh, using as lit literature for, you know, uh, either for inspiration or to learn something about art process. Yeah. Um, well, I have the. I, I actually like as far as art books go for i used to so okay i will say that when <laughs> because of movies i used to travel a lot i used to take some like location jobs and it would so happen like you get a call on like a uh, monday afternoon and they're like hey can you get on a plane tomorrow and you're like wait what <laughs> they're like yeah we we need someone right now at xyz location uh we you know we have a ticket ready for you are you ready and it's it's for four or five months. And when you're single, you're like, "F yeah, I'll do it." <laughs> you're gonna pay pay me to fly to you know wherever and work on a job. I'll, I'd love to. So I ended up like, you know, moving stuff into storage, or it would get lost in the move. And so I lost a lot of art books over the years. But these days, um, let's see. Let me look at my shelf here. What do I have? Because a lot of my stuff. Is storage. There's this. One book that I'm, because I'm trying to learn how to like 2D animate these days, just for fun. And there's this book here called uh, Elemental Magic. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And I've been using that a lot um, for certain personal work that I'm doing. Um, it just talks about like how to make 2D effects uh -huh. and you know, makes water look like water, fire look like fire um, when it's moving. And then one of my other favorite uh, books is generally I try not to look at like art books. Like if I'm making concept art, I try not to look at concept art, if that makes any sense. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's very inbred, if the, <laughs> not to sound. But like, you know, if you're making dragons, you don't want to look at dragons. You, you want to look at the source. Like, because mm -hmm. other, otherwise you'll just make something super generic and super uh contrived and so you'll you know you'll end up copying a concept artist and uh, so what you want to do is again it goes back to research so a lot of times i i just have uh these a lot of these photography books this one favorite photographer of mine let me pull up his uh his, his name is joseph kudelka and um, I, I really love his, his, his photos. He's a Polish photographer. Um, and I own two of his books. One of them is Chaos. I'm not sure what the other one's called again. Um, and then, of course, there's this other photographer. His, uh, it's this book called Beneath the Roses by Gregory Crudson. And the Gregory Crudson guy, Beneath the Roses, it's extremely cinematic like that guy puts for just for one photograph it's a, it's a whole film production um it's some of the most uh beautiful images i've ever seen and and there's so much story and depth to them uh mm -hmm. it's it's really crazy so 
And then, of course, I have like the old, you know, Little Nemo and all these other, you know, drawing books and stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, if there, I don't know if you have noticed any new questions because uh, I don't think I have. Uh, uh, but, you know, let's just remind people about uh, your involvement in the upcoming uh, event uh, so uh, you will join us together with uh, other 60 or more uh, artists and uh, we'll have like a bunch of different uh, people there like you know 2d artists 3d artists concept artists illustrators animators uh and so on and uh, i think that like uh, every one of you have like something really special to offer uh, for the audience and uh, i uh looking forward to your material uh because you're in like a good <laughs> position that you already have a lot of it uh, recorded so yeah it will be easier to you know e either take some of it or you know make something new based on it but uh i'm also looking forward for the uh, for those set of tutorials that you're preparing and also the if maybe it will be in a form of a course or whatever uh mm -hmm. so it will be like really really interesting and especially what we have seen uh, uh this scene that you've been painting uh, uh with this uh, a big uh, 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 uh a monster and these soldiers uh, and uh uh, all the uh, uh, different ways that you use Blender for uh, creation of uh, your designs. Uh, I think people will really learn a lot from it. And I think even I myself might enroll in such course uh, because uh, I'm also, also started yeah. working on my own portfolio. So I'm also looking at opportunity to, you know, sharpen my skills and learn something new. So, uh, that being said, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have any other que okay, this is another question. What's the mm -hmm. medium age at which you think one should already be in the? Or oh, have you answered this already? No. Which one? Uh, what's the what's medium the age at which you think one should already be in the industry? Oh, I okay. So, well, that's a very. I don't because I know some people that started, like. Uh, like, uh, there's this really good artist, Tom Tenery, and he hasn't posted much many y y lately, but he's, like, one of the best artists out there. I think he's worked on all the Star Wars movies and Tron, and uh, he's just so amazing. And he was an architect before, so he wasn't in the industry. I think he, like, came to Art Center when he was 30 or something like that, and then he just, you know, skyrocketed and blew past everyone and you know works on every single big production now and uh he's just really great so i i guess it's not about age but it's about like your work ethic and your trajectory based on like uh how long you've been doing it because obviously it, it, uh, i will say like i think when you're older there's a bit of uh maturity in your thinking that you're able to uh, like skip past a lot of certain things, but it all depends. I think it all comes like I, I can only say that now because I've been doing it for so long and I don't know if it's because I'm older or it's because I've been doing it for so long that my way of thinking is a little bit different. Does that make any sense? Of course it does, um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I can't truly answer the question, but I think age is not a problem in art. It's all based on your work ethic, repetition, and uh, your drive to just do it over and over again and get better. Um, and where you find inspiration from. I think if you stick to the principles, like in the beginning, it's really hard because you see all these like uh, paintings that are really beautiful that people make and you know, you want to do the same thing. So you end up painting the castles and you end up painting the dragons and and yeah, everyone needs to go through that. They need to get it out of their system. But eventually you have to find out, you know, what makes you happy when in art and what you want to do. Um, 
And uh, if you if you don't break past that, then I think you will be kind of like on the outside looking in. Um, but it's really hard to break past it because once you begin to break past it, you kind of feel like you're not breaking past it <laughs> until you all of a sudden do in a year or two years time. So if you just have trust in yourself and have faith in yourself and and you know you're putting in the time, then it's literally a matter of time. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. You're going to be the best. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be good. There's just no way like in this universe that you're not, it's not going to happen. That's just the way I see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I promise you it's going to happen. It's just a lot of people, they don't put in the time, but they say they put in the time. But when what they're doing is, you know, they're working and they have Netflix on in the background and they have Hulu on and HBO and they're binging shows and they think they can multitask. Well, I have news for you. You can't multitask. <laughs> um, and every minute that you're splitting your brain's functions is a minute that you're losing because you're putting, you're sitting down and you know putting in the time anyway. So might as well make it truly productive. So I, you know, just have it, it's like uh, I guess what I learned early on. I don't know what book I read it in, but it was like they said there was uh, something along the lines of like there's putting in the time and then there is putting in the time with focus and intent and those are very two different things Mm -hmm. because you could put in the time but you're only halfway there in your head but if you're actively there I think that's the most crucial differentiation as well you need to be intellectually there as well like willingly mentally committed Um, and that means like not multitasking and just learning actively and basically what you said actually does make sense i mean like in any other aspect of living you know if you focus on you know on the uh, particular uh thing you know you will probably do it faster than the one that doesn't than the person yeah. who is doing like multiple things at the same time so yeah um so we have another question uh, do you always know how to tackle a project or you like trying new stuff without focusing on the time or result yeah okay so for my professional work i already i always know 90 percent of the time after years of doing this i have a pipeline set up start with research it's unavoidable research um tons and tons of research then you move into sketching and these sketches you don't have to like there's a difference between doing pretty sketches for the internet versus you know sketches with a purpose and intent and 90 percent of the time my sketches for professional work in this right after research phase look like complete garbage because i have i'm doing they're they're literally like 20 second sketches because you're just like oh i got this research idea i don't want to forget it so they're visual index cards essentially you just draw a square and you put a circle in it and like three different, you know, scribbles and you're like, cool. And then right underneath, like, this is going to be this, this is going to be that, this is going to be that. And then you come back to it later and you refine it. But it's like, you know, chicken scratch storyboarding, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and then past that, you research again, continue researching. And then uh, you do a quick thing in Photoshop, an idea of what you want. And then um, you transition into 3d and uh if you have time for 3d it all depends on the length of the project like if someone calls me and says i need an illustration tomorrow um i'm most likely not going to touch 3d i'm most likely going to go the photo bashing route 100 mm-hmm. um because there's just no time so if you know i'm not going to go sit there and model a woman with flowing robes and all this other stuff i'm just going to go google flowing robes and what type of robes they are you know what ethnicity what culture um what what time period Mm -hmm. research all those things and then textures what color scheme what type of lighting what type of design you know uh all that stuff and then kind of proceed from that and then after that you go 3d and then more research and then 2d painting more research and then 
with each step you you do you expand on your research and it becomes more and more specific because in the beginning it's more blue sky research mm -hmm. you're looking in the beginning you're looking for ideas and then at the end you already have an idea you're looking for uh like execution at that point like particular needs like oh i have this metallic panel here and I need rusty metal. So now I need rusty metal research. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not going to do rusty metal research in the very beginning. Uh, I didn't ask you, and this will be my last question. Uh, uh, so what is your set of skills? Like, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, this should be my first question, but uh, oh, okay. uh, like, uh, what type of work, uh, you know, can you even accept, you know? Oh, yeah. So I, um, I, I haven't marketed myself as a director, but, uh, so let's just go back to, uh, what, what I actually do for work right now, these particular days is, uh, design. I, I, I do vehicle design. I do, um, environment design. Uh, fantasy, sci-fi, contemporary, all that. Um, extremely well versed in sketching and painting. Um, I I generally don't accept pure 3D jobs because I'm not a full-on 3D modeler. But all of my work starts and ends in 3D these days. Mm -hmm. um, especially if I'm on really large productions these days, 2 2D paintings are becoming more and more irrelevant. Like, no one really cares about them anymore um, as much. Uh, and I only mean that in regards to a pure 2D painting. In my experience these days, it's like, oh, you, you 2D paint? Cool. Can you use this 3D program instead, though? Um, so 3D is a big, large uh, part of my tool set. And then um, I also animate a lot on my own. Um, I have some short films I've made that I haven't, you know, released. Uh, one of them is like 90% finished five years ago, and I just never put in the 10% because uh, I just, you know, moved on to other projects. Mm -hmm. uh, one day I'll just put in the 10% and finish it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have a lot of different passions on my free time. I do oil painting, uh, which I love to do. It's my favorite medium. Uh, traditionally speaking, sketching with pencil and pen, uh, animating. Uh, I, I mean, in another life, I also would have liked to learn music and you know create my own music, but that's about it. So ultimately, I plan to, you know, do a, a bit more filmmaking as well and making my own ideas, uh, which I am working on, um, on my own time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, okay, uh, everyone, uh, uh, these were, uh, <laughs> I hope these were <laughs> your final words, if, if new question doesn't come up, and if it does, we'll have to answer it. Uh, okay, he, someone asked, is that okay. IFCC thing going to be free? Well, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, free content at the IFCC, uh, really a lot. Uh, uh, will the uh, Anasis uh, uh, part be free? Well, you know, you'll have to <laughs> we'll have to wait for a, a bit to, to uh, so we uh, you know talk about it further and uh, uh, make the final decision. But uh, it's possible, and uh, even if not, there'll be a lot of free content. And uh, also, I think that uh, the current price uh, of the ticket is joke comparing to the amount of content uh, they'll be available and there's like six days uh, full of uh, you know uh, full of amazing uh, 2d and 3d related content so but you know this time because we're online we have the, op uh, uh, the opportunity and possibility to offer a lot of it uh, for free so i suggest that you uh, subscribe to our newsletter that's the best way you know to to be informed on time you know about any changes and you know uh program details and that kind of stuff so whew, any last words no uh, thanks for having me i appreciate it and i'm looking forward to the ifcc event um 
Uh, there's one last question, not even listening to music. No, I listen to music. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I just mean like, just don't watch TV. That's just my opinion. But aside from that, uh, no other last words. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for joining. Uh, uh, everyone else, thanks for being here. Thanks for asking questions. I always, you know, I think that everyone on, on, on who is streaming and ha having guests uh, is uh, <laughs> begging the crowd to ask some questions because it makes uh, the conversation so much more interesting. So, yeah, uh, hope to be with us next time. We'll meet again on Wednesday. Uh, we have the amazing guest, uh, Dax Pandi. Uh, he's a developer of the Gaia software for the terrain generation. This will be our, uh, I think this will be our second uh, public talk interview, you know, Gaia presentation. Uh, kind of thing and uh, if you haven't tried Gaia uh, I recommend that you do uh, I'm not sure I think there should be some kind of trial uh, free trial version or, or something like that uh, really not sure about it but uh, it's a, it's an amazing piece of software I think you, you, I, I think NSU as well will you know enjoy using it uh, uh, because it will, you know, give a lot of power to your. Uh, I, I actually bought it last night. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So oh. I, I've been wanting to get into it for a while. Um, I just didn't, haven't found the time. So yesterday I was like, all right, it's time. Oh, that's so. great. That's great. Uh, uh, that's like really. <laughs> it looks. It looks like we prepared this, but uh, we really uh, haven't. Uh, I think that Anis didn't even know that uh, uh, we'll have ducks. Uh, no, here. I didn't know. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the the visual that uh, promotes that next uh, stream, and the image below is is something that has been made in Gaia. So definitely uh, be with us on Wednesday. Uh, that's it. I'll stop streaming in.